Right, my name is Craig Downer. I'm a resident of Minden, Nevada area. I'm an innate believer in the freedom of all living creatures, the natural freedom, their right to live in the natural life community or ecosystem. This is one great reason why I became a wild horse activist, because I saw the horse as returning to his true authentic place in the natural world. And this compelled me to write two books. Uh, one earlier book, uh, Wild Horses Living Symbols of Freedom, and now this uh, latest book, The Wild Horse Conspiracy. I think they're beautiful, magnificent animals. I do have an innate belief that all of uh, the creatures, God's creatures on earth, should, should be given the right to be themselves and to, to live free in, and in a world and that it's up to people to learn to share the land and freedom with them. I think that is our great challenge today. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think upon our uh, answering this challenge will depend the future of life on our beautiful planet Earth. When I was a boy, I would go out and observe these animals in the Pine Nut Range. And later I met Wild Horse Annie, Belma Braun Johnston, in uh, Reno, and I volunteered my services. Anyway, I, I ended up doing a lot of public education for them and also observation in the wild. And I also represented them before reporters and in court cases. Wild horses need ample wide open spaces of thousands of square miles of relatively natural land. They need a lot of grass. They need enough water, but they can subsist in semi-arid, even arid areas, as long as they're given the space. They have a need to fulfill a role on Earth today, which is really uh, that of a great healer that can heal the Earth and that can heal people. And that if people learn to share the land and freedom with them, then they will, t uh, they will heal themselves as well as uh, heal this ecosystem. I have seen the concrete results where many of the people that I have spoken with or just been an example to have actually changed their attitudes toward the wild horses and now they they recognize that they are truly natives and they recognize the fossil record and they recognize that they are different herbivores that actually help build the soils and seed the plants to a much greater degree than the ruminant grazers actually they are being reintroduced in places all over the world to restore degraded ecosystems to restore the soils to reseed the plants such as uh, up there in Siberia where um, the permafrost is, is melting and the horses along with the musk ox and the saiga antelope are being introduced to uh, restore the tundra grassland where the permafrost is, is melting and that uh, serves to cool the earth. They also are great preventers of catastrophic fires in this era of global warming. In the words of, uh, of shaman uh, Sioux, Lakota Sioux Shaman Orville Looking Horse, they are pounders of Earth's drum and they uh, give a rhythm to life and they release energy from the inner Earth. I help horses by first listening to them, by observing them, by recognizing each individual horse as, as a unique presence and all of them together, their society, and this is why I wrote my book, The Wild Horse Conspiracy, and why I put forth the solution to this problem as reserve design, which is giving them enough land, the right kind of land, the appropriate habitat, enough water and resources so they can be truly long-term viable populations on the earth. Uh, I try and bring light and be a spokesman for the wild horses and the burros, their cousins, which are also uh, of origin here in North America. And to speak for them, not to speak for uh, greedy, selfish interests, uh, livestock ranchers, uh, 
miners that, that plunder and chew up the earth, uh, frackers that are poisoning the waters and the soils for short-term uh, consumption of energy. Uh, uh, I stand up for them and, uh, and for the integrity of the, of the wild horse containing ecosystem and will continue to do so because I know it's the right thing to do. Freedom is on the cover of my book. I'd like to convey to you a very special story, the story of freedom, the stallion. Then on January the 2nd, 2010, I observed right after he had been helicopter gathered up there in the um, Black Rock East herd management area in northwest uh, Nevada uh, on the Paiute Meadows Ranch. Uh, he was gathered with his band of 10. He was the, the stallion um, that kept a tight rein on these uh, wonderful, mainly dark colored horses, including Princess Diane, which I later ended up uh, adopting. Um, anyway, when they were pinned, uh, at first uh, um, they fought and they, they looked for an avenue of escape. And then the, the uh, sexes were separated and the young ones were separated. But freedom resolved this magnificent black stallion with the diamond on his forehead and the proud arch and, and flowing uh, wavy mane, he resolved that he was not going to be captured and that if it meant leaving his uh, dear family, his, uh, his band, then so be it. To, he loved his freedom so much that he struggled and struggled. And when he was in the pens, he got hung up for a long time and they came around and they prodded him the capturers who get millions and millions of dollars. They prodded him with an electric prod and they finally got him un unhung hung up from that metal panel. But when he got in this little run of about uh, 50 or so feet, he made three tries to leap over the six plus uh, foot metal fence. <clears throat> And finally, on the third try, he cleared it. And once he, he went over the metal panels, he was confronted with a very tightly strung barbed wire fence, four strand, and he knew exactly how to bust that fence down. He hit it full breast, and uh, it went down, all the wires loosened from the, the uh, wooden posts. And then he, he was tangled in the wires, but. He was so uh, amazingly um, dexterous that just in a few seconds he did a little dance with his feet and he freed his feet immediately from these tangled barbed wires. And then he ran out into the desert toward the, the big mountain in the background and then he, he took one side long uh, glance back at his family and I tell you even uh, the, the, the most hardened BLM people there paid their big bucks, you know, to betray these animals. And, and many of this men and women were in tears and some of them were openly sobbing uh, at this um, tremendous display of, of prowess and uh, courage and strength. And uh, it, was, it was a magnificent experience and it was one of the most compelling and and uh, life uh, uh, reconfirming experiences that I've ever had. I believe in the long term and I believe that, that persistence, if we just re keep true to our course and learn to get better, hone our abilities, we will make that significant breakthrough in the vision that so many of us have shared and uh, will, uh, will transform how people live on the earth and it'll be a, a real healing experience uh, 
for all life, in, including mankind. They are truly the fitting animals here, not the misfits. Mm -hmm. 